All right. Okay, document is in the future. Is everybody ready to go? Inherency. The war on terror is not only a way of opening up new markets for Western companies, but the war itself is extremely profitable. This is disaster capitalism in which we exploit and prolong disasters to stimulate economic growth, according to Klein, an investigative journalist and climate justice professor in 07. Bush seized on fear not only to launch the war on terror, but to ensure that it is for profit. Bush outsourced healthcare to soldiers, interrogating prisoners, gathering and data mining info. The role of government is not an administrator managing contractors, but a venture capitalist providing seed money. Weapons contractors have seen profits soar thanks to the war. The army goes to war with Burger King and Pizza Hut to run franchises on military bases. That is the post-September 11th difference. Before the primary economic role of wars was to open new markets. Now wars are the new market. The premise of the shock doctrine is that in normal times, government must balance competing interests of corporations and voters. When the nation is shocked, like by 9-11, the government gets a chance to push through legislation to force neoliberal reforms. American University Professor Murray in 15. Authorization to use military force marked a watershed in counterterrorism. Previously, the U.S. had treated terrorism by bringing individual criminals to trial. The shock of an attack on the homeland led to Bush's declaration that those attacks were acts of war. Congressional leaders made a broadly worded use of military force authorization. The resolution has neither geographic boundaries nor a temporal stopping point. It was passed so quickly that the perpetrators of 9-11 had not been named, allowing the president to determine who was responsible. Thus, the plan... Congress should repeal Public Law 10740, which is the 2001 AUMF, and ban drone strikes, airstrikes, combat, and 127E programs in counterterrorism operations. Solvency. Ending the AUMF should end the war on terror, but presidents have used drone and airstrikes as well as 127E in combat to circumvent congressional authority. The plan closes loopholes. Investigative journalist Hearst in 22. That AUMF has been invoked to justify Guantanamo Bay, attacks in Somalia and Yemen, and ground missions or airstrikes in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Pakistan, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen. That authorization has been called on to justify support for 13 countries. The U.S. military ran a 127E effort in Mali. No administration cited the AUMF when it comes to Mali. U.S. drones stalked the skies above Libya. Despite hundreds of drone strikes, not to mention attacks by aircraft, Obama argued the attacks did not require AUMF citation. Advantage 1. Militarism. Profit incentive means the war on terror must go on forever. Continuing a war relies on public support, so the result is racist propaganda designed to prove that every Muslim is a potential terrorist to justify construction of a permanent police state. Ethnic studies professor Sudbury in 04. Iraqi protesters taking to the streets after the fall in Baghdad were succinct. Their slogan, we will not sell out our country, suggested the Iraqi people were at risk of being sold out. When groups opposing the occupation began to take violent direct action, paternalism was replaced with tough punitive attitude to these criminals and terrorists. Criminalization of dissent in Iraq has proceeded so rapidly that Bremer's reconstruction budget included $400 million for prisons. Prisons were designed to permit warehousing of population groups considered to be at high risk of committing crime, working class black and Latino young men and women in particular. The construction of prisons in Iraq is an indication that Bush plans to remake the country's criminal justice system in the image of the U.S. gulag. The end point is the necessity of torture and surveillance to get information, however faulty, to justify continual attacks on Muslims at home and abroad. Klein previously cited in 07. Suddenly, the fear of terror was greater than the fear of surveillance. Info collected from loyalty cards can be sold via the FBI's security data. One program tracks terrorists by figuring out if a name matches name in Homeland Security Database. Take the name Muhammad. The software can search terabytes of data in a second, impressive unless they know the wrong Muhammad. Freelance interrogators must extract from prisoners actionable intelligence. Prisoners under torture will usually say anything. Contractors have economic incentive to use whatever techniques produce information, regardless of its reliability. During the invasion of Afghanistan, U.S. intelligence agents would pay for fighters handed over to them. Do you have any theories about why the government would sell you out to the Americans, member of a military tribunal, asked an Egyptian prisoner? Come on, man. He replied, in Pakistan, you can buy people for $10. So what about 5000 A corporate war must be advertised. Government and academic expert documents insisting war is justified out of necessity or a drive for freedom and democracy are results of an effective advertising campaign. Public interest scholarship, Jarrell in 08. Universities are funded to do military-oriented research. The CIA is turning to universities to develop high-tech gadgets that track down terrorists. The CIA's cozy relationship with academics has been reinforced by the agency's presence at annual meetings held by academic groups. Equally important is the upsurge in patriotic correctness following 9-11, coupled with the ongoing right-wing campaign to swatch un-American dissent in the university. One of the most controversial post-9-11 programs by the CIA is PRISP. The program provided tuition support, loan paybacks, and bonuses. Students who receive such funding cannot reveal their funding source. The program permits the CIA to collect information on professors, dissenting students, and what goes on in the classroom. Research that is supported in many universities under the funding of intelligence agencies raises questions about what kind of relationship there is between these agencies and academia. Advantage two, capitalism. 
The war on terror props up the capitalist economic system, including the oil market, Klein previously cited in 07, which pushed the new oil law for Iraq, which would allow Shell and BP to sign 30-year contracts in which they could keep Iraq's oil profits. Private security companies flooded into Iraq, providing security for top officials, guarding bases, and escorting other contractors. Recruiting became a for-profit business. Companies such as Blackwater ran soldiers through live combat training. When soldiers came home, they were treated by private healthcare companies. The longer the war went on, the more it became a privatized war, and soon enough, this was simply the new way of war. The mercenary industry alone is worth rebellion, and there's an economic boom when the bombs start falling. Fossil fuel capitalism is the root cause of social unrest, endless war, and existential climate change. The drive for profit guarantees exploitation of people and resources and violent competition for new markets. Political science professor Albert Arnett of Seven. Fossil energy can be used 24 hours a day and 365 days a year with constant intensity advantages. Fossil energy for the capitalist system make it indispensable degradation of nature, the greenhouse effect, ozone layer depletion, loss of biodiversity, desertification, the disappearance of tropical rainforests, et cetera, is unquestionable. The price of fossil energy is ecological destruction. While the forms of fossil energy, oil has been key to capitalist development. Under conditions of energy shortage accumulation takes the form of dispossession of the less powerful by more powerful private corporations and nation states. Oil security is competitive and conflict friendly leads to a declining to human security. Less powerful people are excluded from crucial decisions. The formula of blood for oil is essentially threat. Strategic control over oil regions could be secured by using massive military powers in Iraq. Resistance to the war on terror will result in a rollback of neoliberal reforms and a swing toward democratic socialism. This is historically true in Latin American countries where the shock doctrine was perfected, Klein previously cited in 07. As Latin America emerges from shock, old ideas are bubbling back up. Argentina erupted in protest against austerity measures and proceeded to force out five presidents in three weeks. Opponents of neoliberal economies in Latin America have been winning election after election. Latin America's movements are not replicas of their predecessors. Of all the differences, the most striking is awareness of the need for protection from shocks. Latin America's mass movements are less centralized, making it harder to demobilize whole movements by eliminating leaders. Chavez made the cooperatives in Venezuela a top political priority, giving them first refusal in government contracts. It's a reverse of government outsourcing. Rather than auctioning off pieces of the state to large corporations, the people who use resources manage them. I'm going to cut that there and manage them. And then I'm good for cross. All right. Um, let's start on the capitalism advantage. Uh, resistance on the war on terror will result in the rollback of neoliberal reforms and towards democratic socialism. Why is Latin America analogous to the United States in the war on terror? It's an example of cases in which the shock doctrine has been used. So historically, the U.S. did things like back coups in Latin America, which overthrew democratic socialist presidents to impose presidents who were more willing to enact neoliberal reforms. Obviously, there was some pushback to that. So they took the leaders of the movements and threw them in prisons, called them terrorists, things like that. Very similar to what we do in the Middle East today. So I guess is the argument that the Middle East or Middle Eastern countries move to democratic socialism or that the United States moves to democratic socialism post plan? I think potentially both. Okay. I guess what why would the United States ending its counterterror operations move, yeah. all of a sudden convince Congress or the people or anybody to go towards democratic socialism when it's like not yeah. terrible popular right now? So the point of the shock doctrine is it talks about how usually the government has to balance competing interests between labor and corporations. But when shock happens, they can move much more toward corporations because labor isn't going to push back, right? Like after 9-11. But when Americans become resistant to the shock doctrine, when they understand how it functions, they become much less willing to be shocked when things like this occur. A good example of this is potentially like, you know how with coronavirus, there's like a huge sect of people who are like, it's not that bad. It's just like the flu because they're unwilling to believe this kind of shock driven propaganda. Obviously that's sure. not necessarily no, something that we so, centralized to COVID. But. Right. So I guess that might explain why they don't move towards more corporatization, but how do you, how does that explain how we push the needle back towards democratic socialism, right? Because this argument is because just like people aren't going to give in to cap more. It indicates that when crisis happens, what's more likely is going to be a pushback of the labor movement. So a good example would be like after the Great Depression, what happened was there was a huge movement toward unionization, a huge movement toward a labor push, ultimately resulting in the New Deal and an increase in welfare. If people aren't willing to be shocked, then what happens when crisis, economic crisis occurs is people insist on more reforms. And we're even beginning to see some of this now with people who are just not going back to work for minimum wage when their jobs are kind of starting back up after the pandemic. All right. Um, militarism. How do you resolve uh, other issues of militarism around the globe um, where it's not necessarily justified by counterterror, but by other things like countering China? Um, I think that right now the big issue is counterterrorism because that's how war is justified right now. It's like we have to continually surveil these people. I would argue that the plan does a lot to prevent 
us from shifting because as soon as Americans are kind of aware, like there's no more political motivation to start a new war. And I can give you some evidence on that. Polls indicate that Americans just like do not want to fight anymore. So there's not, it's not likely another authorization would be passed by Congress. All right, cool. Thank you. I'll get it uploaded. There it is. It's going to be two off. Then the case, um, I have it labeled as framing. You can probably read it on like solvency. I don't know. Militarism cap. Has everybody got it open? Awesome. Then unless anybody is not ready, we'll get started. Counterplan. The United States federal government should substantially revise its counterterrorism operations to one, re-envision counterterrorism operations to prevent terror through resource investment into weak and fragile states, two, shift to an economic and diplomatic focus on combating terrorism where appropriate, and three, invest in regional security architectures and local alliance structures, and the counterplan solves the worst excesses of the war on terror while maintaining free market capitalism and allied credibility. It's easy in the 21. Re-envision counterterrorism strategy invest before conflict rises, identifying prioritizing prioritizing rapid fragile states, develop trust and work relationship, detect and understand emerging threats, identify eliminate terrorist leader policy, encourage sense, and economic reforms and bold governance and incentivize the local population to reject terrorist groups, uh, the policy pursuits of the security architecture, maintaining military presence, and ready for to help the U.S. to find its natural interests, the United States should to continue to secure its interests, expand democracy, reinforce human rights, and promote free market capitalism, meet our objectives. The U.S. must ensure military lines are effectively coordinated. The U.S. policy must balance military efforts, alliance, counterterrorism, and cooperative regional partnerships. The balance effort to be coordinated. There's no for free and foreign policy. And second off, the Allies did that. Alliance credibility is on the rocks. U.S. consulting now on Russia, but Afghanistan has made European partners wary of U.S. commitments. Landler at all in 128. After complaints from Europeans, they're blindsided by Afghanistan. The wild France was frozen now. Biden's gone on his way to involve allies in every step of the crisis. The balance continues to be diplomatic reset. We have low points in terms of trust, mutual respect, because Afghanistan Europeans worry about measuring the same power in the resolve. The United States, the Allied House, effort that reflects the. Chaotic throughout from the guys, Afghanistan and Europeans criticize the United States, consult them this time, American officials consult the galaxy groups, and the plan undermines alliance credibility, counterterrorism operations, are essential alliance maintenance, 1121. Washington should have at least four partner led efforts of more willing to leave the United States demonstrating the to play enabling roles, uh, Biden and East Resort US credibility is part of the first step is consistent between US and the allies, perception of the United States needs to do stuff to get allies to participate in alliance with the means leading on some counterterrorism lines of efforts that only effective answer as actions, not words, and fractured NATO allows Russia to invade Ukraine, that fractured liberal world order, sent 127. The Russia is now preeminent with the capability to project our global authoritarian partnerships and elements of the new doctrine, Russia connection, revision, power, Crimea, towards Ukraine. Not demonstrated Russia's interest of asserted for actual transatlantic alliance, leading line, transatlantic alliance, could the way for citizens the international order in favor of one more immutable Russia. The, that doesn't mean the West of Harlow's United States should continue ordering the Europeans to respond and impose costs on Russia that tried to deter an invasion. And that caused US Russia nuclear war, launch on warning causes deterrence, break down Blair in 15. There exists a growing, a growing list of risk escalation, more by designer and into a nuclear war. The, the US and Russia adopted an action for launch on warning safeguards are loosened and a familiar operational environments cause action in the fog of war may emerge. The atmosphere has become even more hair triggered because hyper war, 18 oblivious ages destroy both decapitation and tensions that rise until the crisis escalates to the threshold nuclear use. This threshold is low. The launch on warning. Means deterrence based on the second strike retaliation is an intellectual construct or uh, risk of mistaken launch may be even higher than during the Cold War and framing. Extinction outweighs trying to improve the lives of the people while ignoring, ignoring existential threats, fails to uphold any value to life. The only universal ethic is to avoid human extinction, treating 14. Human kinds are described to be asserted as first fundamental right challenges can hit everybody's theory. Uh, there should be restructured to address challenges for survival, literature, and adjustments to the point we have to motivate our interests in existence. We should assume responsibility for future generations doing what we can for survival and give your life is meaningful. Uh, human rights can only apply to your living human kind, but not to the Republic of Incest and Grass. No morality can make sense if it cannot apply the respect to fundamental rights. Uh, people formulations can have ignored support from civil society would help on militarism. One, no mindset shifts away from militarism in the United States. Other wars are inherently entrenched, which means we should probably try to solve their worst excesses. Two, we say that other countries like Russia and China still pursue militarism, which is net worse than United States militarism. The allies disad uh, proves, uh, proves this argument. Third, the Giroux piece of evidence uh, is infallible. You can't prove that our scholarship is bunk just because uh, just because Giroux says so. There's no, uh, they make them specifically indict our authors and uh, their cred credentials. Go to the Captivate. Cap's good. First, no transition to democratic socialism. Latin America is fundamentally different because of a lack of corporatization. They have no reason why they push the needle back. All they do is jeopardize capitalism in the short term. And capitalism is good and sustainable. Technological progress has successfully uh, dematerialized economic growth with caffeine 19. Capitalism and technological progress are driving dematerialization. They material productivity of agriculture improved dramatically. 45 million acres was returned in nature. Fertilizer is declined. Total thunder crops are reduced by 35%. Crude oil production doubled. Natural gas production jumped by 43%. The United States extreme peak cold demands. Cold consumption was down 36%. Energy from the sun, wind, and uranium is getting cheaper faster and widely available. Global peak oil demand might come soon as 2028. Users remember they've not 
community uh, uh, need of a performance rare earth magnets uh, companies use our and expensive been community alternative there's no shortage of the materialization you last season man change over to, uh, to, uh, for technological change economic growth will be for consensus judge because it's not realized how strong the incentive is for company contest work that spending a resource profit hungry uh, and companies can offline will use ways to use less of a given material that becomes possible to substitute one resource companies that use fuel molecules by making better use of materials they own some are replaced by another innovation is coming tutorial uh, we should have companies more raises ahead of the halting covers uh, to 1.5 degrees rely on so you know uh, co2 from the sky oh i the Welch card. Scientific consensus proves warming is inevitable. Absent negative emissions technology, only capitalism solved. Welch in 19. Halting temp uh, to 1.5 degrees. Line. Reliance like any CO2 from the sky. CO2 removal is advanced. Passing the expansion cost of machines to capture CO2 and fall by two thirds or more. R&D from the industrial carbon. You have to drive innovation. Global carbon political will appears to be growing. The GOP war like climate hawks. Uh, R&D push by climate hawks. Within 10 years, reduce technology. Remove CO2 from the air on a massive scale. And the world's getting better. Poverty, education, mortality rates, and uh, life expectancies. Capitalism governance is key. Uh, McAfee in 19. Total number of poor people peaked in 1970 and 1999. 1.76 billion people were in serious poverty. 16 years later, this declined by 60%. Hundred million fewer people in poverty than 1820. Every region has seen a large poverty reduction. That's no longer it is. Let's talk about eliminating extreme poverty by 2030. Every region, man, 2500 daily calories, 90 percent of the world's population access to improved water, secondary education, enrollment is every day. Interpret life expectancy is going to continue. Universal Southern Africa has regained uh, 10 years of life lost. Uh, inequalities, well-being, and secret poor countries have become cancer shrinking. Inequalities in health, uh, education, nice sanitation, are collapsing. Capitalism is spreading out throughout the world. Ignorance is not exempting the result of what's being done. And transition wars from capitalism to nuclear. Million 17. Nuclear weapons hold in the hands of military. We are very regarded kind of revolutionary organization. Preserving you know, life and holding property of capitalist institution rather than allowing death row of dictators for judgment. Haters, uh, the highest in confrontation. What happens? Has been tested in the Soviet Union and capitalism's key to space solves resources, settlements, and spillover tech. Cumbers in 20. The government projects are going to do cost development and improve uh, the sensing and data, the uh, space activity, the private space, imaging satellites, and able, uh, the mining and able humans to settle and improve life on Earth. Commercial space are rapidly growing opportunities with falling cost, space attractive, and numerous inevitable cosmic threats. Only space colonization can avoid extinction. La best in 19. Our only hope for survival is uh, leaving Earth and colonizing corruption of the super volcano, blocking out some light. Photosynthesis has become compromised. Global temperatures uh, plummeting, destroying the agricultural sector, sector, asteroid impact, climate, killing asteroids, many 1,000 orbiting the, the, in our uh, vicinity. The sun is on energy flux you're responsible for that. Glacial periods followed by warming and glacial periods, the sun red giant for uh, phase increased global warming because all life to go extinct to one billion years. The only option for survival will be moving ourselves to another planet. Uh, I've got 30 seconds left. Give me a second to find another card. And best studies show capitalism has absolute decoupling coming now. Assumes outsourcing. House Father 21. Coal peaks, solar battery costs all tenfold the world. Uh, produce more clean energy than from coal oil, oil demand is falling. Uh, world's on track to absolutely decouple global emissions peaked in 2019. 32 countries absolutely decoupled absolutely decoupl decoupl terrestrial and consumption emissions. There's no relationship between the growth and emission reductions. So emission export decline. There's no law requiring growth to be dealing with emissions. So this can be replaced. Yeah. I'll get that card sent out. Sorry. Okay, I deleted the old doc, put a new doc in. It's got the last card on the bottom. And oh, I'm I got to cross it, it over. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Everybody good for cross? Greg, yes. Fantastic. What exactly is a weak and fragile state? In regards to what? The counter plan. The sure. Um, we yeah, we say that they are states that have internal issue, or like internal problems that are happening, um, like terrorism, but also other instances of like um, violence that are happening within those states, uh, civic unrest. We think that we should diplomatically engage and invest in those states to ensure that they maintain like alliance credibility with the United States without like militarily going in and enforcing it, if that makes sense. Is the U.S. a weak and fragile state? Uh, we don't. We don't think the counter plan invests in the United States. We don't take a stance on whether the United States is a weak and fragile state. Even though the U.S. has civil unrest, we're not a weak and fragile state. Just I said we. Do, I said we don't take a position on whether the United States is a weak and fragile state or not. We think okay. that the counter plan has the United States invest in other countries, not the United States. Does the U.S. invest in every weak and fragile state outside the U.S. or just some? Uh, just the ones deemed necessary for counterterrorism strategies. Okay. Uh, what are the worst excesses of the war on terror? Sure, we think the 1AC isolates them. Things like uh, torture and uh, violations of human rights in the pursuit of militarization. We think that those things are the worst excesses and the counter plan is able to resolve them because it moves the United States away from using the military to enforce 
Uh, the, so do we no longer use any military counterterrorism? The argument of the counter plan is we only use military in response to being attacked, if that makes sense. That to, to the initial like investments happen with like economic and diplomatic interactions, which greatly decreases. Like okay. we don't position troops anywhere, anywhere anymore. We don't position troops okay. in these the countries anymore. Status of the counter plan? Conditional. Great. Let's talk about uh, the stent evidence. You tag it as multipolarity lets Russia and China project power. Can you tell me where this card talks about China? Um, it's just about Russia because I unhighlighted the parts about China. Sorry, I just didn't change the tag. <laughs> okay. um, deterrence breakdown. Is the US or Russia going to cause a nuclear war? Um, we think the Blair evidence says that both are likely to cause a nuclear war if Russia invades because both have altered their safeguards uh, for going to war with one another. Why is the US going to start a nuclear war over Ukraine? Um, we say that the United States has adopted accident prone launch on warning technology, which essentially means that if they think that Russia is doing more than invading Ukraine or, or if they think Russia is lashing out, they are likely to send a nuke first. What is the accident prone technology? What does that mean? Sure. The Blair evidence says that they have adopted a specific protocol for Russia that says that we launch faster, not slower to like prevent, to prevent getting beat essentially. Okay, uh, I'll take running prep.
Okay, stop prep there. I have 410 years and I'll upload. Document is up, the counter plan, the disad, and then case. Is everybody ready? Yes. Oh, Nick. Okay, y'all yeah, wait. You're good now? Fantastic. Counterplan, the counterplan solves neither advantage per its own evidence, it invests in free market capitalism, which means it doesn't solve the capitalism advantage and it doesn't solve the, the militarism advantage. Militarism isn't done just through the military, but also through private companies that the military hires and the CIA running things like Guantanamo Bay and black sites. That's the uh, first advantage. Next, uh, interpretation, the counterplan must specify which agencies will invest in which countries. The standard is moving target. They'll dealing from my arguments by specifying the counterplan, which destroys stable link ground and ski strategy strongly negative. Vote after preserve competitive equity, prefer competing in terms to define a clear bright line for what the counter plan should specify what counts as reasonable as variable and subject to judge intervention this is mostly to preempt them claiming that they somehow solve the advantage with a vague counter plan that doesn't specify how it solves let's go to the disad the U.S. won't fight for Ukraine due to lack of political will. That means alliances are inherently unsustainable. Hill reporter Lonas on T12. 55% of Americans were against sending troops into fight in the event of an incursion in Ukraine. Only 13% thought it was a good idea. 34% disapprove of U.S. troops going to Ukraine to assist but not fight Biden indicated the U.S. would not send troops to the country. And specifically, young voters opposed supporting Ukraine. Journalists depends on 211. Generational advice concerning Russia was evident. Americans under 30 describe Russia. Nearly half of this group said the country was an ally. According to a CBS News poll saying negotiations around Russia and Ukraine, the U.S. should by age 18 to 29. 29% say support Ukraine and 61% say stay out. Young Young voters will have an outsized effect on the midterms, giving them strong influence over policy. Reporter Mysick in 21. Young voters turned out big in 2020 to deliver the White House, providing they're ready to do it again. A new poll show 66% say they're more enthusiastic or as enthusiastic as ever to cast their ballot. 36% say they were on the fence who did not plan to vote. The midterm elections will be a referendum on the current White House policies. And Russia is not expansionist. It's threatened. Perceived Russian aggression is Russia trying to deter NATO. Journalists modern in 18. Site media channels warn Russian citizens war with an expansionist West adding to this anxiety or NATO's efforts to modernize and expand military capabilities. Putin's legitimacy has been rooted in a domestic narrative of torture, Russia under siege for foreign powers with NATO the focus. NATO was one of Russia's primary opponents. From that perspective, the situation looks concerning. NATO troops are being forward deployed to former Soviet satellites in Eastern Europe. Germany is considering rearming with an eye on Russia. NATO is destabilizing. It results in arms races between NATO and Russia, driven by U.S. intervention. Cato fellow Carpenter at 20. In 2019 and 2020, there was an influx of drones, battle tanks, fighter planes, and additional personnel calling and grad sandwich between Lithuania and Poland missiles. Could do considerable damage to NATO forces. NATO has engaged in provocations in recent years. The decision to expand the alliance to incorporate three Baltic states was unfriendly. NATO's military exes along Russia have surged. Um... Yeah, let's go on to the case. Extend solvency. We need to end the war on terror because it's resulting in an increase in militarization. Go to advantage one. That's the militarism advantage. It indicates that the war on terror is used to justify things like racism and continuing surveillance. They say that Russia and China militarism would be worse, but that's not true. Russia and China don't. First of all, I don't even know how we get to China here. Second of all, Russia does not do things like actively intervene in the Middle East to cause things like Guantanamo Bay. The U.S. is actively doing that now. Also, they don't have any evidence that Russia would begin to do it, whereas my evidence indicates that the U.S. is doing it now, which means it outweighs on probability. They say that we need to specifically indict their authors. I'm happy to do that. Let's talk about their alliances dissent. Their second card, the Levitt evidence, comes from somebody who was a former deputy assistant for security for intelligence at the U.S. Department of Treasury. That means they probably have a vested interest in maintaining the U.S. military. The same with their stent evidence, a former U.S. national author for Russia and Eurasia. Of course, they would be afraid of Russia. And the Blair evidence, which comes from a nuclear security expert and research scholar who is somebody who has been involved in the academy directly tied to the U.S. military. That's a direct indict, which means that you should not believe their scenario and prefer mine on face. Let's go to Cap. 
extend the advantage scenario capitalism is driving climate change through its use of oil we need to resolve the problem they say no transition collapse of capitalism will unify the left and embolden labor movements to ensure a peaceful and effective transition economics researchers burkhart true and schmelzer in 20. what could bring three figurative movements together degrowth is key degrowth it's an emerging social movement that overlaps considerably with anti-globalization and climate justice and movements like Thomas, Blaine Bouvier, Food Sovereignty, Nonprofit Cooperatives, The Care Revolution, Free Software, DIY Repair Workshops, Basic Income and Transition Towns. These commonalities can be the cornerstones of a common framework for emerging alliances of progressive forces. And elites can't preserve the system. They won't be able to exploit developing countries to get enough resources. Lewis 2000. With the withdrawal of underdeveloped countries from the global economy, developed countries will face material, ecological, and energy shortages that will force them to downscale their economies. The first world will be forced to create regional economies that are sustainable and self sufficient. Sustainability. Economic growth causes existential climate change. Innovation is a non-starter, Kirk in 18. 50 billion tons, that's how much we can take from the environment without destroying the wild flavor flavor using 80 billion tons each year. That's why there has been a 40% drop in the amount of phyloplankton in the last 50 years. We have smashed through four of the nine planetary boundaries, eradication of the species on the scale is destabilizing the whole ecosystem for growth. To be green, we need to get back down to 50 billion tons with aggressive carbon pricing and doubling of the technological efficiency. We hit 95 billion tons by 2050. There's no making growth green. And growth drives globalization and urbanization, which drive disease. Life science professors blew it all in 17. Income growth is associated with animal protein consumption, which increases livestock production zoonotic merchants urbanization implies greater concentration and connectedness with people globalization facilitated pathogen spread in the case of other viruses like zika the primary mechanism for spread is international trade and travel the same is true of coronaviruses urbanization and globalization made outbreaks difficult to control vaccination is not feasible economic growth increase the likelihood of disease emergence and transmission on poverty there are evidence that the world is improving is correlative. It doesn't necessitate that it comes from capitalism, whereas the economic elite encourage poverty and inequality because they benefit from having desperate workers, SEI 20. Poverty is not caused by the poor. The capitalist system is held up by the rich who benefit from increasing inequality and poverty. Capitalism is designed to ensure that the rich and powerful are able to maintain their position by enslaving the majority. Also, all of their evidence on innovation is not unique to capitalism. They have no evidence that innovation doesn't occur under socialist systems. Uh, space. Turn space travel causes extinction faster. Fertility is threatened by space radiation. Flocks in 11. Powerful protein particles would sterilize any female embryo conceived in deep space. Male fertility was negatively affected with particles damaging the sperm cat. This could make any mission to colonize other environments and not starter space shuttle technology is not sufficiently advanced. And space travel kills the mitochondria in cells, which you can't survive without. Journalist Sandy in 20. Space travel can cause the cells' mitochondria to malfunction due to changes in gravity and radiation. The human body reacts to living in the weightless, relatively high radiation environment of space answers have not been good. Space can have all manner of effects, including damage, vision, bone loss, muscle atrophy, and compromised immune systems. I can give you a clean document. Yes, okay. re-uploaded that and I'm ready for cross whenever you get it downloaded. All right, you get all right. Um, let's talk about the turn. Actually, no, we won't talk about the turn on the descent. Uh, the counter plan theory standard. Uh, what is the bright line for what we have to specify for the counter plan to be theoretically legitimate? Which agencies are going to invest in what countries they'll invest in? Okay. I guess when all of the offense that the AF reads is just like, no, the counter plan is fundamentally militarist. How is that? Like how, I guess what, how does specifying the agency resolve any like two NC pivots? That's like no, we saw, we res not militarist, right? Um, because you're claiming to solve the first advantage about how we have things like black sites and prisons, which are done by the CIA. You didn't like in cross sites. You said we remove troops, but you didn't say which other agencies would go in. I'm arguing that militarism isn't done just by the troops. I am trying to avoid you pivoting to say, no, 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 we pull out all of those agencies that potentially do bad things. We only leave in the good ones, depending on okay. what the good ones are. Sure enough. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the capitalism argument, uh, the Burkhart in 20 piece of evidence. Where does this talk about unifying the United States or unifying US, pe like people in the United States or the developed world? Um, it talks about how movements degrowth movements are growing and that that would allow for unification. I yeah, which movements? Which movements? Yeah, which movements unify post the plan? 
Oh, it says down here, anti-globalization, climate justice, the commons, blame behavior, food sovereignty, nonprofit cooperatives, the care revolution, free software, DIY repair workshops, basic income and transition towns. Right. I guess what are the, I guess, where is the, the line that's like these movements will work together and not just like, here's a whole bunch of movements all around the world that are maybe happening, that are happening. Like where's the lines like they come together? I mean, that's what the evidence says, right? It says that all of these movements can unite over degrowth and have begun to do so. All right, cool. Uh, five minutes of prep starting now. All right, stop prep, 56 seconds left. I'll send on the chat here. I'll get this doc uploaded.
Okay, it's on the top of the same one NC round six stock. We're gonna do counter plan, disad, cap militarism. I guess framing on the top of the case debate, the like truity card stuff. Craig, you're muted if you're trying to. Indeed, I am. Um, is it framing counterplan, disad, cap militarism? Sorry. So flipping the case. Counterplan, disad, framing cap militarism. Counterplan, disad, framing cap militarism, though. Yes. Sorry. Okay. I made that not that's very right. clear. No, that's, no it's, it's probably me. That's all right. No big deal. Okay. I'm ready. In that case, let's get started. <clears throat> the counterplan, we're not gonna go for it, but we'll answer the we'll answer the theory arguments here. Counter interpretation. You should just uh, you should ask us to specify in cross X and cross X is binding that resolves a lot uh, resolves most of their offense because it uh, 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 saw stops us from uh, pivoting out of it. Uh, but our, our interpretation is better. It allows for uh, negative uh, negative flexibility. Uh, uh, their interpretation is infinitely regressive because they'll always ask us to specify something more and more because it'll always uh, because we'll always spike out of their ar argument uh, arguments. Yeah, and, and you reject the argument, not the team. There's no reason why reading the counterplan is a reason to reject the team if we're not uh, going for it. There's no proof of use on this flow. You shouldn't vote for it. The dissat. We're not going to go for the disad anyway. Either cross or extend the hill between the United States won't uh, defend uh, won't defend Ukraine if Russia invades, which means that there's no escalation to, to any of their turns to uh, reach extinction. But secondly, we never said we collapsed that they collapsed NATO. We just said that it fractures it and destabilizes in the short term, which means that they don't get any of these uh, NATO is inherently destabilizing turns. Uh, in the, they don't get any of these NATO destabilizing turns. But three, cross supply from the militarism flow where they indict all of our authors on this flow that all of our authors just want the United States security state to remain. Uh, that that probably means that all of our all of our link claims are probably bullshit, which means you shouldn't evaluate the fact that uh, the app uh, decreases uh, alliances. Uh, the fourth argument we're going to make is that NATO is inevitable and there will always be a reinvestment in trying to uh, the deter Russia, which are in trying to deter Russia, which means that like the, the impact turns are inevitable. They are not quantif- they are, they have not explained how the A, the app collapses NATO or B, what the time frame is or how like NATO uh, causes Russian or Russian lash out. Framing. Filter the entire debate through the lens of extinction. They have conceded the Trudy evidence coming out of the 2AC, which means that extinction outweighs every other impact. Well, the the, the Trudy evidence gives two arguments. First, it says that uh, making that uh, trying to prevent extinction motivates our value, or, uh, create them. Uh, motivates our uh, value in existence and creates an inherent and intrinsic balance uh, value to life for uh, marginalized populations by uh, affirming that all lives are meaningful. But secondly, it says that future generations outweigh that you need to protect the trillions of, uh, of individuals that have not uh, yet been born that, uh, that, uh, that whose ethical, whose like ethical being uh, necessarily outweighs any uh, marginal increases that, that the, uh, the, app, uh, that the app identifies. That means you're probably not weighing the militarism, uh, the militarism advantage because they have not, ex uh, they have not ex uh, extrapolated how militarism causes extinction. And the 1AR is too late because 2 NC strategy has pivoted off of the, 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 the 2AC the, the capitalism debate. Capitalism is good and key to avert uh, and key to avert multiple existential threats, climate change, uh, tra transition wars, and uh, 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 resource conflicts. Uh, technical advances allow materialization, which solve its worst excesses. Will line by line the the the, the, the UAC. They say that it drives climate change, but you can extend you can extend the uh, the. You uh, can extend the, the wealth piece of evidence that climate change is inevitable in the status quo. They have dropped this argument that they, 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 you can't degrow fast enough, which means that it's just a, that it's just a question of, uh, uh, which means that it's just a question of can we develop uh, uh, CCS technology? We say that, that we say that, the, that yes, the uh, wealth piece of evidence that the capitalism is the only way that develops uh, CCS technology by providing uh, profit incentives. But you can also extend uh, the uh, the House Father 21 evidence from the uh, 1NC one uh, one that says that uh, as coal peaks, we shift over to the natural gas and that we will continue to uh, the, we will continue to uh, work, uh, work towards uh, greener fuels uh, through profit incentives. The, the public sector is not sufficient because that is inherently slow and innovations are uh, slower coming from the public sector. They say collapse unifies and elites don't support group the transition arguments no transition centuries of history proof societies can won't shift fast enough luke lauren 21 as second crusoe humans learn that humans have been up the environment around them gains of political easily other progress is a myth uh, uh no example of human showing you know, intelligence or will the 
necessary restructure side of the measure required for degrowth, let alone at the speed to avert ecological collapse. No democratic today to without growth over medium long term. So all the popular world like say the thing degrowth is evil because of desirable evidence suggests that it's unfeasible. Degrowth reflects a pseudo religious faith in humans' willingness and ability to uh, convert ecological worldview to adjust their their insta intuitions. That the Lewis evidence that elites uh, don't uh, don't support. We say or the the elites can't support. We say the elites aren't the ones that supporting, but it's the uh, people that in the, the it's like the farmers in the Midwest who have been disillusioned to think that capitalism uh, like benefits them that don't uh, give up growth. Uh, also, like corporations continue to pursue growth. They uh, say the warming is uh, they say warming is or. They say innovation is not true. They read the Kirk piece of evidence. The, uh, the, uh, but we give you multiple pieces of the Welch piece of evidence and uh, the, the House Father piece of evidence gives you uh, in, empirical examples. And any teams are coming. They solve crumb at all in 19. Innovation made the green economy feasible. Whether it's you to build renewable energy, government uh, operations, reducing carbon pollution, negative emissions technology, they remove carbon dioxide already there. The to stabilize the atmosphere composition, the GHG, the world law, uh, negative emissions, uh, amazing items, renewable energy, cheaper, the biomass uh, recovery, the atmosphere, the shortage shortages is possible. The direct air capture has the mineralization, rock mines, carbon dioxide, pump carbon dioxide, the uh, project demonstrated this is possible to uh, scale rapidly policy makers. Have Profit motor drive, uh, creates an incentive rewards, uh, better tax, uh, car, uh, the economy, uh, top, uh, economic incentive that unleash innovation and commercialized CCS and low cost alternatives energy that solves emissions in a decade. But innovation is key. Meyer in 18. Scientists found a method to achieve the full carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Right? Research uh, hits at the eventual construction of carbon stars. New technique promises to remove carbon directly. Uh, the IOS is really going to remove the ton of $94. We're going to stabilize climate for affordable amounts of money without changing the energy in the market for the low carbon fuels is better than a few years ago. The lower end of the water percent is doable. Five years ago, improvement phase. The appropriate name comes from the last rate of cost within the windows. Part of the fact that they've uh, tested technology on the bad prototype plant that's on the office of the principal that's probably smaller than the simple competition. Models this suggest the hardest edge already decarbonized parts of the economy. I can use there as we just favor the CO2 removal of the CO2 at least 3 to 5 percent of the GDP that puts up around on how expensive it will be. Amers are heading down till we're heading to zero, which could be back in 10 to 15 years. They uh, say that uh, growth equals disease. One, there is no impact to disease that's isolated in the whoopies of evidence, no extinction level threat. COVID proves it doesn't cause extinction, which means we should probably uh, uh, reinvest to prevent uh, resource wars, prevent inevitable uh, global warming. They say that our evidence is correlative as well, which is not the same. We are we don't have to win the McAfee that the world's getting better piece of evidence, but it says that uh, capital. And is uniquely key for pulling people out of poverty because it employs individuals and, and causes an, an increase in uh, wealth in, in nations that otherwise wouldn't get that wealth that don't have the, the resources. Only capitalism causes that because there is no incentive to like provide for uh, nations halfway around the world if there is no profit incentive. They, they say that innovation is not unique to capitalism. They have not read you a piece of evidence that says that uh, democratic socialism is necessarily able to create innovation, nor have they been able to read you a piece of oh. There's like a dispute here about the 1AC says they've moved to democratic socialism. Then the 2AC uh, reads a whole bunch of micro degrowth society cards that are fundamentally disagree. Democratic socialism assumes that the state still exists, whereas these micro degrowth, degrowth movements are all about anarchy, which means that Sarah can't go for like both of these arguments because they are fundamentally incongruent of like what happens when cap collapses, which means you should probably default to the fact that my, there is no mindset shift. They can't buy in uh, the space extinction stuff. We're not going to go for space call. They say space equals extinction. This card is power tagged. It just says that if we try to go to space, the people that go to space will die. We say that the people that remain on Earth probably still survive through uh, resolving climate change with uh, negative emissions technologies. They say that space kills mitochondria. That doesn't explain how like it results in destabilization back on Earth. There is no like casual claim that says, because we don't say all humans all get on the ship and go to space. We say that corporations probably stop pursuing space when they realize people are dying. So like there's no widespread human extinction from space call. The net benefit is war. Extend the extend the uh, million piece of evidence that have that transition wars go uh, nuclear. That uh, the elites will uh, elites and uh, the civilized countries will uh, launch nukes uh, to maintain the, the, the to maintain that the economy that current economic system will uh, read more cards. Caps also war trade contractualism. Why right in uh, 2020. The economic interdependence reduces conflict barriers to trade and inheritance agreement that support war reduces free trading interests, uh, to limit aggression, conflict creates oil additions, force skeptical societies not control. It's from getting reported to the study supported peace by trade. Again, economic and higher public property more willing to get in conflict for you know, development of transactions required trust. Uh, uh, gold growth can be no worldwide trade proxy. Uh, contractuals and measure uh, the peace contractual peace supersedes democratic uh, 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 supersedes uh, democratic peace. The, um, the militarism stuff. Extend that they cannot resolve broader structures of United States militarism. The United States will always uh, invade in the in the military and other in other areas. They do not have a war on terror necessarily key piece of evidence. But secondly, they don't like, impact this out to extinction, which means it's just a question of like, does the uh, like, at the end of the day, your your ballot is a question of extinction. They have conceded climate change is inevitable in the quo, which means only capitalism can develop NETs to be able to resolve it. We have topics now. We do, right? Okay. Sorry, I forgot. Yes. <laughs> These times are interesting. Um, okay. Let me pull back up this document because I also forgot we had cross -ups. All right, two minutes. Yep. 
Can you show me the line in your evidence that indicates NETs only exist under capitalism? Um, so the crop evidence says that innovation is necessary to make the greening possible. We say that profit incentives are key to uh, innovation. Um, yeah, what, what evidence do you have that indicates profit incentives are key to innovation? Right, um, that's the, from the 1NC, the, um, what is going on here? The McAfee piece of evidence that says that capitalism and the technological progress it brings are what's driving dematerialization. Um, that like co corporations try to resolve long-term problems faster than governments do. And like these socialist communes do because they are like, they have a vested interest in ensuring the business goes on long-term. So we saw it with like peak coal, capitalism filled in and shifted to uh, liquid natural gas because the coal was no longer profitable. Okay, war, this cap solves war card talks about economic interdependence, correct? Yeah. Trade still happens under democratic socialism, correct? We think that at the economic interdependence that our evidence is talking about is that of like multinational corporations working with each other to prevent conflict. We say, um, the well, two arguments here. First, there is no like response in the 2AC to the 1NC evidence that's just like elites in a non-diplomatic or like non-democratic regimes use nukes to maintain capitalism because they want to keep getting their fossil fuels pot. That's the Milne piece of evidence. But secondly, the right piece of evidence says that um wait wait hold on what's that last one which uh which oil company moguls have nuclear weapons we don't say the oil company moguls have nuclear weapons we say the people they buy fossil fuels from in these countries do have nuclear weapons or will pursue nuclear weapons the milne's evidence says that like as you transition to democratic socialism or as you transition to these like macro micro movements that the elites find ways to create conflict okay i'll take that in total 435 used i have one more card i'll upload I'll get that pulled back up. Give me a second. My novice needs to know where I am. Let me go figure out what room number I'm in. Apologies for that. Um, this is five minutes. It's going to be the NATO stuff, and then the militarism advantage, and then the cap advantage. Is everybody ready? No. No. What was that again? NATO stuff, militarism, cap? Yep. That's the order. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm ready now, sorry. They can't get out of these turns on the NATO alliance. You should extend that NATO is unsustainable per our failure to intervene in Ukraine. That means that the alliance is going to collapse one way or another. The question is whether we should do it now or later. This answers their NATO inevitable evidence because they don't have a response to the fact that not supporting Ukraine is going to fracture the alliance. You should extend the evidence that Russia is threatened. They are not expansionists. They just feel like NATO is on their borders, which means that a failure to signal support for the alliance is going to result in them feeling much safer per the, the kind of security dilemma analysis that this relies on.
basically Russia feels like NATO wants to invade them. So they're going to build up to deter a NATO expansion and it just kind of spirals. They have conceded this evidence indicating that Russia is going to feel much less threatened if NATO kind of uh, simmers down. You should extend the next piece of evidence to indicate that NATO provokes this kind of war across applying to their US Russia war scenario, which means that we are giving you a higher time frame specific scenario for war. They say that they don't say they collapse the alliance, just fracture it. But if it's true that Russia is feeling threatened by NATO, even just fracturing the alliance should be specific to make uh, NATO feel or, or to make Russia feel a lot more secure because it indicates that NATO is willing to pull back and is not actually trying to invade Russia, which is what Russia thinks. Uh, they say our militarism index indicates that those links don't exist, but we give you our own specific links here talking about how Russia is concerned about NATO. We don't specifically indict their claim that the alliance would be fractured, which means they don't get to get out of this. Militarism. Extend the militarism advantage. We prevent US militarism through the war on terror. They say that we can't resolve this because there are still militarism in other areas. First, this is an entirely new argument. But second, we talked about this in cross -ex. They conceded that the war on terror is a unique form of militarism per the inherency evidence, which indicates that militarism has shifted into a constant state of policing and war in the Middle East, which makes it uniquely bad. There are two implications to this card. The first is if you'll buy my the extinction inevitable stuff on capitalism, this is the only remaining impact. I'll get to that there. But you should extend the impact here. It's 100% probability that militarism results in uh, question in things like uh, surveillance and Guantanamo Bay, which are bad impacts. And second, that uh, this proves that militarism is a function of capitalism here because we militarize the Middle East so as to allow profit incentive. You should prefer this analysis, but we'll get there on the cap flow. Go there now. First on the cap flow, go to space. They have given you a whole bunch of scenarios like super volcanoes that prove extinction is going to happen in Earth. And if we don't go to space, we're not going to be able to resolve them, which means extinction is inevitable. This makes this entire flow moot, meaning the only question remaining is a question of value to life. That's where you go to the militarism advantage, which means that that's the only flow that you're still going to evaluate in this debate. If there's any risk of the militarism advantage, we can make life better while we're still living. Let's go to growth, degrowth. They say there's no shift. You should prefer my evidence here first. My analysis talking about how groups will unify over degrowth, coupled with the analysis out of the 1AC regarding the Latin American shift, proves first that that first that there will be specific mindset shifts because we give you the groups that will cause those mindset shifts, which are more specific than their evidence that they read in the last speech talking about how shift won't happen. Their evidence just says that shift. Uh, is hypothetical, but it doesn't give you any specific warrants why. You should prefer my analysis, which tells you what shift will happen, which groups will provide the shift because it's more specific. Second, uh, my evidence that comes out of the 1AC, the Klein evidence at the bottom, gives you the only historical example in the debate of questions in which there has been a shift away from capitalism for decentralized democratic socialism. You should prefer this evidence because it's the only historical evidence you have in the round about the potential for a shift and it has been successful and occurred without nuclear transition where that's better than their speculation because it talks about what really happens. They say that democratic socialism is not degrowth, but we give you examples of decentralized democratic socialism in which a state existed and supported these kind of decentralized small communities and entities, which means that that's not true. On sustainability. You should prefer my Kirk evidence to all of their claims because it gives you empirical, uh, the results of an empirical study talking about how much carbon can be created. They, uh, even with strong innovation and strong carbon taxing, there's still going to be enough carbon to blow past these planetary boundaries. You should prefer this evidence first because it gives you numerical examples. And second, because the computer simulation prevents third variables. All of their claims just talk about how capitalism can shift to renewable energy, but don't account for the fact that renewable energy still requires the use of carbon through things like mining or things like gasoline for cars, which can't be done yet through renewable energy, which means their evidence doesn't apply on uh, nets. They say that we can pull carbon from the atmosphere, but don't give you any specific evidence that indicates that this can't happen also under democratic socialism. They just say that profit incentive creates capitalism, but don't have any evidence for this, which means you shouldn't buy it, especially in cases where these Latin American democratic socialist countries do do the thing. On economic interdependence. This economic interdependence argument is new, so I'm going to read a card to answer. Continued growth drives war, 398. There are not enough resources for all the lives to living standards we take for granted as population doubles and resources become scarcer. There can be no other outcome than conflict. We have to be involved in military activity to secure supply. We could not be sure of getting oil if we did not have military presence the war and others. They better not interfere with our oil fields expansion as prime source of conflict. Fifty-six seconds of prep starting now.
Okay. Um, the disad, the cap debate, the militarism debate. I'll sign post where I'm at. I guess if you have the Truti extension on a separate page, still put that on top of the case. So disad, Truti, cap, militarism. Anybody not ready? Awesome. The disadvantage, they do not generate a turn here. The first argument we're going to extend is the uh, cross application of the your authors or hacks arguments from the militarism flow. They say that Levitt and Stent are overblowing the threat of our alliances because uh, they have a vested interest in the United States militarism. That was an argument in the 2AC that gets conceded in the 2NC. Don't let them come back and say we're not going for that argument. That means that we probably don't affect the, the after it doesn't affect the alliance at all. But secondly, there is no bright line in their piece of evidence about how fractured or together NATO has to be for Russia to invade. It just says that if NATO exists, Russia uh, will lash out. We, and they have conceded that NATO never collapses. Uh, well, with the av, it just collapses inevitably in the long term, which means that they don't get offense on the on, on this turn. But third, they uh, do not have a, a terminal impact to this when they have indicted the Blair piece of evidence that's saying that uh, the, the risk of U.S. Russia war nuclear war is uh, overblown and unlikely. Go to the uh, the framing argument. Extend the Trudy piece of evidence. You defaulted uh, staving off extinction first. This also answers the value of life arguments. They dropped warrant number one from the 2NC that by trying to stave off extinction in the short term, we're able to create the value that life is meaningful and solve other problems in the long term, which means that our extinction first framing is good. Even if the extinction is like inevitable over the next uh, 100,000 years through uh, like super volcanoes, we think that trying to stave it off in the uh, near term outweighs the militarism flow still on the Trudy piece of evidence that goes undisputed in the 2AC. Cap debate. Top level, they've conceded the Milne piece of evidence that says that uh, if growth collapses, that uh, transition wars happens. Elites use uh, nuclear uh, elites use nuclear weapons to encourage uh, 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 encourage conflict and nuclear war. They try to tell you that there's a mindset shift uh, because of Latin America proves we say that there's net more wealth in corporations in America that have a, uh, have a vested interest in the oil field. If they're correct that it's the linchpin of global capitalism, they probably have a vested interest in being able to resolve it. That uh, that comes first because we say that as soon as the uh, the, uh, the client happens, that guy has this nuclear lash out. This is a conceded argument, which means it should be pretty easy for you to vote on it, but the mindset shift arguments, they say that yes, mindset shift, but they fundamentally mishandle the warrants, the Luke Laura piece of evidence that's uh, not about whether or not we should uh, degrow, but the fact that when we degrow, we use, uh, we don't, aren't able to innovate because uh, there is no incentive to go to renewable energy. People are just trying to survive in the short term. Degrowth societies are more likely to use things like coal and oil because it's readily accessible instead of having to develop new innovation, which means the question of what kind of energy gets used, capitalism is not better. They have not been able to read you any piece of evidence about how these degrowth societies are how democratic socialism is able to uh, shift to green energy. They just say that they're doing it without any, that uh, Latin America is doing it without any warrants as to why that's the case. Only capitalism is able to create the provident incentive to, create, to be able to shift away. The Welch evidence goes, uh, the, the Welch evidence goes conceded. The capitalism allows us to, or the, it doesn't go conceded. They, they try to say to like Kirk, the extend the Kirk evidence and says, and say that like capitalism drives extinction. However, we give you multiple pieces of evidence that uh, warming is inevitable, absent negative emissions technologies, which we say is now way, which, which, which uh, we say capitalism is the only one way to be able to use when they are uh, to develop. When they have conceded the Luke Laura piece of evidence that, that when we uh, when we move over, we don't try to solve those negative externalities because we're just trying to survive, then that means that uh, only the capital uh, that's try or die for risk and innovation is able to resolve warming through negative emissions technologies. They say uh, that, they, that we don't have any pieces of evidence that say that, that, that they're being pursued, but yes, we do. We read you multiple pieces of evidence. The Welch piece of evidence from the 1NC says that tax incentives are being pursued in capital and that, uh, oil, that uh, fossil fuel capitalism is necessarily key to lobby for them in uh, Congress. The Krupp all piece of evidence also says, uh, also gives empirical examples of how innovation has been able to decouple uh, 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 growth. Uh, that it tells you, uh, that we, we tell you that uh, like when peak coal happened, we moved to natural gas and that similar transitions will happen to fossil fuels, but we need uh, uh, providence incentives to be able to get there. The war arguments. One, the war arguments weren't new in the 2NC, but we'll answer the Shriner 96 card anyway. One, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not contextual to uh, current political climate. It's from uh, 25 years ago. We uh, give, we give you the, the well, right piece of evidence from last year that says that economic interdependence is the only way that war has been able to resolve. They say economic interdependence. Exa uh, exa the, the, secondly, the Shriner piece of evidence is not able to like do macro analysis of wars. It's just like uh, it increases the risk for conflict because we protect resources, but it doesn't tell you how that results in uh, broader wars. The right piece of evidence uh, goes back to this historical analysis and says that the free market 
economy was uh, critical uh, to uh, induce peace by trade. We say that when we shift to democratic socialism in these smaller communities, then that means that like workers own the, uh, the means of production and are less likely to outsource uh, their jobs or outsource uh, the buy, uh, buying uh, products, which means that uh, there's less trade that happens, which kills interdependence and increases war, which probably outweighs uh, the uh, outweighs the affirmative on time frame. They have conceded that transition wars go nuclear from the Milne piece of evidence. So it's just a question of who access it, uh, accesses it better. You should default to our empirical analysis. Look, at the end of the day, time frame outweighs anything else. We They have conceded extinction should come first. We think that we should ex prevent extinction in the short term. They have conceded the Luca Laura warrants that the transition will, all, will be net less green and will focus on individual survival and sustainability instead of like macroeconomic shifts that are necessary to resolve questions of global warming, but also to resolve questions of war and interdependence. I have 25 seconds left of prep. Gonna be an overview and then test the cap flow with cross applications for militarism. Everybody ready? Overview the plan is key to resolve uh, the economic system that relies upon oil, which is forms the foundation for modern capitalism and climate change. Their evidence is non-specific to this scenario, which talks about how capitalism through our involvement in the Middle East relies upon the continual use of oil, which means their claims that we result in renewable energy are not contextualized to the affirmative, but we'll do evidence comparison anyway. Let's start on transition. You should extend my evidence comparison from the last speech indicating that transition will happen. They say that it results in nuclear shift, but have conceded that that's not historically what happens. Their evidence is purely speculative. Well, as mine comes from actual historical examples of a shift. Even if these examples of a shift are not in the US, they're going to be more contextual than their speculative claims because they are specific to how uh, a shift actually occurs through mindset shifts. People are going to agree on it. They're going to vote different people into power and that results in change. If we end the war on terror and gain a better understanding of the shock doctrine, that's how the shift is going to occur. It's not going to allow the elites to just like nuke their citizens because they don't like a shift. They've conceded this evidence comparison, which is a second layer analysis indicating why my evidence is better. They say that economic interdependence is critical, but you should prefer, they say economic interdependence prevents war. You should prefer the specificity of my militarism advantage, indicating that profit incentive drives war. This is backed up by the trainer piece of evidence that I read in the last speech. This is better evidence than their claims because they give you a why war occurs. Their evidence tells you that economic interdependence has occurred in the past and that war has occurred less, but my evidence tells you why war is occurring. That makes it better evidence because it can account for third variables here. Also, the climate scenario is going to matter more than the war scenario. First, the war scenario is never impacted out to extinction. They say it's nuclear, but that's not an extinction implication. Second, probability outweighs time frame because it gives us a way to prioritize impacts based on what's actually likely to happen. Otherwise, I could say, you know, there's a high time frame impact of the lizard people coming out of the center of the earth and taking over the US government. Obviously, that's not something that we should put any effort into, which means that probability has to mediate your impact calculus. Let's go to climate change. You should extend the Kirk evidence, which gives you an empirical study of the way that growth is going to interact with uh, with increasing carbon. You should read this evidence because it gives you a specific empirical study talking about how much carbon we have to have and how much carbon we will have even under uh, a situation of growth plus extreme innovation. That makes it more specific. Their evidence, they, they claim that degrowth will continue to use oil, but don't have any evidence that this is true. Whereas the Kirk evidence indicates that degrowth won't just not use oil. It's just going to use less of everything. It's not that we're going to have a renewable energy transition and continue to have to use oil to do things like mine silica to create solar panels. Instead, we're just going to use less of everything because there's going to be less demand in general. This evidence is much better than theirs because it's a numerical study that can account for how uh, growth results in carbon as opposed to their decoupling studies, which talk about a transition to renewable energy. They make the claim that renewable energy and decoupling are the same thing. They're not. 
We all debated the energy topic. We know that renewable energy is still going to require some use of fossil fuels to continue to do things like mine. That was the analysis from the last speech, right? You gotta use gas to get the solar panels from place to place. You gotta mine. All of these things result in carbon. My evidence is specific in that it results in, uh, my evidence is specific in that it talks about carbon as opposed to theirs, which uses renewables as a proxy. So my evidence is better here. NETs. They extend the Welsh piece of evidence. You should read that part because nowhere does it talk about capitalism. It says that innovation is critical and then they make the assertion that innovation doesn't occur under democratic socialism, which is not an evidence assertion, which means you shouldn't believe it. You should prefer my evidence that indicates that innovation will occur under democratic socialism because I give you these historical examples of Latin American countries in which democratic socialism occurred and innovation continued to occur. This is preferable to their assertion because they don't give you any warrants backing up these claims, which means it's probably try or die for degrowth if you want to solve climate change. Good Good day, Sarah. Always a pleasure.